morning. My mic? No, I didn't hear myself. <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, right? So I was just sitting here thinking, um, I want to pray this prayer that's called the third step prayer from um, Alcoholics Anonymous. And I don't know why, but I feel compelled to do this. So, oh Lord God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me from the bondage of myself that I might better serve you and my fellows. Take away my difficulties that victory over them might bear witness to you to, to those I would help of thy love, thy power, and thy way of life. I do thank you all of these things. Make sure you can find that online if you want to. Okay, so I just want to say that in case you're joining us for the first time, I am not Pastor Diane. Um, I am Jamie Randlin, longtime member of Church of the Cross. Pastor Diane is out of town today, so I'm going to be leading worship, and we are privileged to have a message today from Lisa Pulse, who is also a member of Church of the Cross and is a chaplain at Sutter Roseville Medical Center. She works graveyard, so she is usually not here at worship with us. And she got off work this morning just a couple hours ago and is here to share with us, so we're very grateful for that. It is a feast day today. It's Pentecost, right? It's sort of like the great birthday celebration of the church. We've seen the Holy Spirit in action throughout the Old Testament at different times, but never before did the Holy Spirit come and indwell Christ's followers, God's people, like happened at Pentecost. So it's going to be a fun service. We're also grateful to have Peter here today on the piano. Okay, so let's see where we are in the bulletin now. Alleluia, Christ. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It says him first. So first we're going to sing a hymn. Spirit of Gentleness, hymn number 396.
words of baptism, we have passed over from death to life in Christ, and we are in his age. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life, flowing with freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters, you flood us with mercy ground forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. Lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God, our creator, the resurrection of your son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading is from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rush of the mighty wind, and it filled all the house, and there appeared to them tongues as distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each, each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, are not all these people who are speaking Galilee, Gal Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Mesas, Med Medus and Inhabitants and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Syria and Pamphylia. And the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them all telling in our own tongues the mighty work of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, 
that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Yeah. And on my men servants and my maid servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and manifest day. And it shall be that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. the ships to and fro, and then Rithia, which you made for the sport of it. Give it to them, gather it in your hand, that they are filled with good things. You send spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. Look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smile. words in mind to be strong. I will rejoice in the Lord. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8 verses 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Do not receive the Spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be From the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verses 8 through 17, 25 through 26. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because 
because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Sees him and remembers him. You know him because he abides with you and in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. The peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Jamie, thank you for that prayer. I heard that prayer last night for the first time. And it was followed by a person I was talking to telling me to always do the next right thing. So I think that's a good message for how we should live in this world next right thing, whatever that thing might be that is the right thing. So I don't like to preach, and you may have heard me talk about the last conversation I had with Pastor Mike at the very back of Craig's sitting room. And it was, Lisa, it's time for you to preach. And I was like, I don't think so. To which he said, no, I think so. And I said, I do not feel like I should be speaking about faith, but my own faith is tenuous. And I do not understand always the relationship you have with God, where the Spirit is leading you. To which he replied, that is the message we all should hear. Because often we wonder. So I've met Pastor Diane twice face to face, and three times she's asked me to preach. And being just a few days ago, when things <clears throat> changed at our Synod Assembly and what was going on, she asked me um, to give you update on what was going. I was going to attend assembly. Oh, it's not me, it's you. Okay. How about I try and speak louder? Okay. I don't want you to listen to me. I don't even want to hear me. All right, shall we try this? All right. So I was supposed to go to Senate Assembly, but as John Lennon said, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, and I did not get registered in time. So here I am called to preach on Pentecost Sunday. I think the simplest thing I can say <clears throat> is that Bishop Rohr was asked to resign by Bishop Eaton. Bishop Rohr declined to resign. And the Synod put together a vote, but the vote did not obtain the 66% necessary to um, remove Bishop Roar. Um, so the last I heard, our bishop is still our bishop. The Synod Council said they did not think the bishop had lost the support of the overall Synod. And I am in conflict in what I think about more than 50% of the voting members of the Synod not thinking our bishop should continue in their role. I'm not sure how much the vote reflects the divided nature of our communities and our country, the uncomfortableness of having a trans bishop, or those who actually read the listening letter, which is somewhere online, and if you wish, I can try and find that so uh, you can read what was put together by the team that we should uh, help create to discuss what had happened in our city. I saw it online uh, two days ago, but when I went to find it last night, I couldn't. So I, I know someone who has the link and I can get the link. No, not now, because it's very complicated and I have a sermon. 
so but we can speak we can speak later So that brings us today, and I've been thinking about what to preach for today. As I drove to work at 3 o'clock this morning, I saw a billboard that showed Smokey the Bear and read, Honor Thy Neighborhood. In previous years, I remember a similar sign with Smokey that said, Love Thy Neighbor. I wasn't sure that Smokey um, was preaching the gospel. Apparently, Smokey does that in his spare time. For returning from work at 8 o'clock this morning, I saw another sign. It simply said, 19 plus 2, America mourns you, in reference to the shooting in Texas. I just finished seminary about a year ago and had several preaching classes. And there was always a discussion is, should politics be read from the pulpit or not? But I feel the spirit calling me to say, at some point, honoring the lives of young people and old people, people at church and people in synagogues is something that should be addressed. There's so much in our country and our community that is heartbreaking these days. I cried initially when I heard 14 children were lost. And then when I heard 19, a cry came for me that I can only say was the spirit crying out because it's unfathomable that there are now 19 more families in addition to all the others who are mourning the loss. And loss comes, I'm a hospital chaplain, so I see loss every day. It's the intentional taking of the lives of people who are innocent. It just seems very unchristian. So here we are asking, what is God asking of us? Or perhaps, that's just me, but I would suspect we all think, what does God want from us? And now I'm here on Pentecost Sunday, and as I reread the passages in Acts, I couldn't help thinking about the Universal Translator in Star Trek and how nice that would be. It lets people listen in real time to those who speak in other languages. There are actually attempts to create such a machine ongoing. I don't think we have finished it yet because I believe the UN would have that, which has six official languages. We heard the story once upon a time of Babel and the God deciding that we should not all speak the same language. I am not here to wonder why God did that, but I am here to say that even when I speak English to English speaking, I cannot understand them, and I know they cannot understand me. I don't know what has happened to our ability to speak to one another, and to listen to one another, and come to some common ground. So a common theme in today's readings was about the Holy Spirit. I remember as a child, making the sign of the cross, and always giggling when we said the Holy Ghost. They probably um, saved some kids from getting in trouble for now using this. But I often think about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit which breathes life into creation and renews the face of the ground. I woke to the sound of rain this morning and was surprised to see it raining still hours later. A life-giving rain which is filling our crops, our gardens, and nurturing our animals. It reminds me that even though I am not a scientist, I see the changing face of our natural world. The devastation of our forests and the fires and the drought that destroy them. The spirit reminds me that I am of this world and responsible for the wise use of our land. Even if you do not believe in climate change, it is hard to miss that humans have abused this very creation the spirit asks us to care for. So in preparing for today's sermon, I read a commentary by a woman named Mita Stamper. She reminded us that the promise of the Spirit does not come to those among us who are faithful and courageous people, already loving one another and the world boldly, but comes in the midst of confusion and fear, where it is hard to understand what Jesus is asking of us. We are reminded that we are to open our hearts 
to the presence of God. It's in the reading from John that I find my voice. I remember that it does not matter if I'm a Democrat or Republican or even a Lutheran. I am reminded of the simpleness and radical nature of Jesus. Jesus who commands and with the Father sends us the Spirit so that we will learn and be reminded of what is asked of us as followers of Christ. It is good for us to remember the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. You are also asked to love our enemies and those who are the least among us. In this divided time, that is hard, but it is necessary. In Micah of the Old Testament, we are told what is required of us is that we do justice to love kindness and to walk humbly with God. Jesus tells the disciple of the Spirit who lives in us and with us to hear the message that we have been left with of Christ and to not let our hearts be troubled. The Spirit dwells in us, reminding us of God's grace and love, and understanding that we should share this love and grace with others. So may the Spirit walk in front of us, may the Spirit surround us, may the Spirit in us help us to love and care for one another in our love, in our and our earth. May we walk with the Spirit to show us what God asks of us as both people and as a church. Seventy-one, shine, Jesus, shine. <laughs> Jesus Christ, his 
only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated while we take the offering. Train us to interact with creation. God, in your mercy.
God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide all bishops, pastors, missionaries, and other ministers of the gospel. Foster our relationships with partner synods and local ministry partners that our visions and actions are spirit-led. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather your people from across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by the life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to... Whoops. It, that was right. I'm sorry. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Remembering, then, his death and resurrection, take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. We now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. And we're all going to read the words of institution together. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come.
Thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. And we'll sing the sending hymn, number 836, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. <laughs>
just a little plug for Ludwig Bonn. You know he was F when he wrote the Ninth Symphony. Just like I have to sing that every time we sing that song. Okay, so now we have opportunities for ministry. Right? All right. Okay, so you have to come to the microphone. Um, I have a big bag full of canned food and soup and a whole bunch of stuff like that. So I wanted you to know that, Laura, I have it in the car. So I want you to take out whatever you need for the list that we gave out. And um, I guess the other canned food can be used for to get into the, on the 25th for the carnival. So, that's all. That's a fun place today. So just a reminder that we're kind of having like a mini canned food drive and a hygiene item drive for wind. Um, like Kurt and I actually went to like a big uh, wind fundraiser last night over in their neighborhood at somebody's house and we actually talked to the people there. They were like super grateful that we were doing that for them. Um, really awesome fundraiser for Wind. Um, got to hear some clients get up and tell their stories of how Wind has impacted their life. So that was really awesome. Um, and so we're, the little canned food drive stuff will go through next Sunday and then sometime that week after all the stuff will so, um, and then I just wanted to um, tell people, we, we announced this last week, but Deborah Myers, who is in front of this church, her um, celebration of life is at the local winery on um, June 22nd, which is a Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 8.30. And um, if you're planning to go, like, we're trying to kind of support and help Jim. I thought some other people organizing it that were friends of Deborah's, but Jim is actually doing it with me, a lot of it on his own, so my mom and I are trying to, like, help support that process, so if you plan to go, you can let me know, because they're just trying to get numbers, so you can see me after church for that. A reminder um, again, <laughs> we're getting really close. June 25th is the carnival event, um, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, we have confirmed basically representatives from every organization. Um, there'll be someone from St. John's. Um, when we're just narrowing down, hopefully, the <laughs> who's going to be here from them. Um, Sacramento Food Bank, New York City Community Service will be here as well. Blue Star Moms. Um, I think the last one we have to secure is uh, social services. Work with them. Uh, and then Sue is going to be our Rock Point um, uh, representative. <laughs> um, so it's going to be really fun. We have a snow cone machine, dunk tank. Um, I ordered some fun games and prizes and we're going to do like a scavenger hunt thing for the type uh, thing where the, everybody will have to like have a little passport to go around every booth so that it's uh, interactive and uh, it's, it, it'll be food and um, all sorts of fun stuff. And of course, good day. Sacramento's going to be here in the morning to uh, hopefully promote it. Maybe they'll stick around or, you know, come back or we'll see what happens. Um, so hopefully. Um, and again, if you have a pop-up, easy up, um, please let me know um, by next week if we can borrow one. We're trying to secure as many as possible. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. 
Um, and we are asking the organizations if they have one to bring one for their booth, but we can always move more just to make sure that we have everything covered. It's, it's going to be 100 by this weekend, so I can only imagine what it's going to be by the end of June. So, <laughs> I mean, it might rain again. I don't know. Yes. about what I'm saying. Yeah, once I turn off the computer, she'll, she'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, and um, if you have any other questions about the carnival, please make sure to sign up too. And if you have questions about what needs to be done before you sign up, talk to me and I can explain it a little bit more or talk to Laura. She's my little co-chair or anybody on the committee. Um, all right. And then uh, at the end, that's it. Our euphemism for announcements. <laughs> Any more opportunities for ministry? Julie, do you need to come to the microphone? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll say it so that people who are Zooming can, can hear it too. Yes, Joanne Anger, who was a member of Church of the Cross for a long, long time, um, passed away on Thursday night. So both of her parents had passed a while ago and uh, <laughs> Tina said that she had just been failed. Tina Anger, her sister, former sister-in-law just said that she'd been failing for a long time. Okay, so if that is it for Opportunities Ministry, we'll have the dismissal. And um, can we start opening the back door again so we can shout out to the community, the thanks be to God part? Craig, do you mind doing having door duty? Okay. Okay, those of you at home can shout out too so your next door neighbors can hear you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. May the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. And you may share the peace of the Lord with each other as you are comfortable.